So I decided to make this series on fluid simulation mainly because I feel that a lot of the videos out there don't really go into the details of what any of the settings do in the fluid sims. So if you follow their videos, you can make exactly what they make, but you don't know how to change it up or you don't know what the settings do and oftentimes you get unexpected results or they just flat out don't work. So with this video tutorial, I'm going to go into the settings and I'm going to cover all of them over this mini part series. But I'm going to do small pieces here and there so everybody can kind of understand what these settings actually do. With that being said, this is the video that we're going to be working on. Okay, so with everything ready, uh, I'm going to basically aim this tutorial for complete beginners for Fluid. If you know nothing about Fluid, this is a great place to learn about it. If you're brand new to Blender, it's going to be a little difficult. I will be calling out all my shortcut keys, and I will also have my key cast on here. I'm doing this without really a script or anything, so it's going to, you're going to see my stumbles and my mistakes as I go, so you can learn a little bit from them. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you do is you're going to hit S8 to scale this box up by 8 Blender units. And then we're going to hit G and Z8. And we're going to move it up 8 Blender units on the Z axis. There's two ways of working with physics that are water simulations. And basically what I normally do is I hit Z to go into wireframe mode. And I just work in wireframe mode. But if you're not comfortable doing that, you can click this little object information uh, tab right here in the top and scroll down to maximum jaw type and click wire and then that object will become a wireframe for the viewpoint only it does not affect the actual renders okay so let's go ahead and press shift a to add in our cone here which is actually going to be our sim our actual fluid and i'm going to scale it up to anywhere i feel looks good that looks not too bad so we're going to go ahead and press seven for top view we're going to move it over here and you guys really have some freedom with it. Don't do exactly as I do. Change it up, use different shapes, use different sizes, use as many shapes as you want. Uh, just know that the more shapes you add, the longer the simulation will take to bake out. Let's do that. And this isn't gonna look exactly like the video because like I say, I'm just kinda creating something a little bit different. Okay, so we got our two cones there and these are gonna be our actual fluid. The next thing we're gonna bring in is we're gonna bring in a cube and this is going to be our little spinny mixer, I guess you could say. I'm going to hit S to scale it, and then I'm going to scale it on the X axis. Right about there. And I think that's probably pretty good as far as the height goes. Now we're going to hit I, and we're going to set a keyframe. And we're going to hit rotation. And then we're going to go to our last frame, which actually this is only going to be 120 frames. So let's go ahead and change that to 120. And then we're going to set our actual last frame to 120. We're going to hit R, Z, and we're just going to spin this around a few times. And then hit right mouse, or your left mouse, I'm sorry. Uh, and then hit I and rotation. I'm going to go back to the first frame. I'm going to make sure everything looks good. It's not too bad. And that's pretty much going to be it for that setting. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to click our cube or our boundary box where our fluid simulation is going to happen. And it every fluid simulation has to happen inside of your domain or your boundary box here. Anything outside of it will not run the simulation. So if I move this out here, it will be only this little bit right here that will actually be in the simulation right there. This little part right here won't change. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on our domain. Click this little button right here, which is your physics tab. You can get to it if it's smaller you can use your mouse wheel to scroll or you can just go ahead and pull this out click fluid and then domain now this setting right here is probably your most important as far as how long it's going to take to run don't mind this cube this is from a previous uh, bake but this is the clarity of the, the fluid simulation so the higher the number the more realistic it's going to be but it also increases your bake time dramatically and your rendering time. So I'm going to set it for about 150. Over here is your preview. Now what this means is the preview is what you see in the viewport. And the reason why I have this cube here is so I could show you. If it's set for preview, this is what you'll see versus the final, which you click down here, which is much more complex. But you notice know that the vertices are at 4,000 and the preview is at 
290. It's a big difference. And 400, 4,000 isn't that many. But when you get to fluid simulations, sometimes they could be in the millions. I had one fluid simulation that was well over 150 million vertices. And that's really hard to view in the viewport if you're doing like an animation like that. So with that being said, if you have a slower computer, leave viewport on. I would say go ahead and max it out to 100, but leave this as preview. If you have a really strong computer, really powerful, you can go ahead and put it on final. But no matter how strong it is, if you have millions and millions of vertices, it will slow down. Okay, next thing we need to do, let's go back to our domain here, domain settings. Let's see. Oh, we're going to go ahead. Oh, let's do the time. Now, with Blender Fluid Simulations, the time is not how long it's going to run. It's how long it's going to take the time, to the total time. So if we have four seconds of animation here, it's going to spread that four seconds along the entire timeline. So if you were at 500 frames, it's going to run that four second simulation across all 500 frames. That's not going to look very realistic. It's going to be too fast or it's going to be too slow. So you want to match up your time to your frames. I typically render at 30 frames per second. So four times 30 is 120 frames. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up our fluid by clicking fluid and then clicking on fluid again. And we're going to repeat the process for this one. I will go into details of what all of this means, but for now, volume is what we want. And then over here, this is going to be our obstacle. We want this to interact with the water. So hit fluid and then click on obstacle. I'm going to change the slip type. Uh, probably a little bit less than 0.2.1 because we're going to try to make it look like honey so we want it to be a little bit sticky a little bit tacky and then the last thing we're going to change is we're actually going to change our fluid world here and we're going to change the viscosity preset we're going to change we're actually not going to use the preset we're going to change the base to about 2.5 and the exponent to 2 I believe it was now what these settings do is the base is going to be how the water moves. Say if an object hits it and you had a really high base, it's not going to move, it's not going to break apart the water. It's going to stick a little bit more. And then the thickness of the water is the exponent down here. So if you want it really thick, use the number lower. If you want it really watery like, I think water is six, and then it'll be very fluidy, very watery, I guess you could say orally, that type of settings. And that's actually all we're going to do for this. We're going to go ahead and hit bake. And it should take about 30, 40 minutes, depending on your computer, of course. But for mine, I think it's about 35 minutes. And we'll see you in OK. Everything is all rendered and ready to go. It took about 25-ish minutes. So let's go ahead and finish this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on my cone. And I'm going to click this little eye icon right here to get rid of it in the viewport. And this camera to get rid of it in the render. And the same thing for uh, the cone. And you'll do the same thing for your uh, objects if you didn't use cones or whatever you decided to use. We're going to go ahead and change to cycles if you haven't already done that. And let's hit Shift Z to go into our rendered view and kind of see what we go got going on. We're going to scrub the timeline a little bit here and see what everything looks like. Yeah, yeah that's kind of cool looking. Not quite as honey as I was hoping, but we'll see what it looks like when we're all done. So let's go ahead and click our cube or what our domain is set for here. Because when you click on your domain, it is actually what the material is going to render on. So we're going to go ahead and click on our materials tab right here and then hit node or use nodes. And we're going to change it to, let's go ahead and do glass. Normally I do uh, principal shader, but I'm not going to get into details. And these little uh, these are actually called fireflies, little specks of light. <clears throat> I'm going to show you how to get rid of those in the render when we're all done. The next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and click on our little world tab right here. Click use nodes. Click the color and crank that all the way up to a nice bright white. And then ray visibility, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. You can leave it on if you like. If you decide to use like a blue color to kind of give the water some color, you can turn it off there and you can have a nice... Uh, blue color in your water, but I'm going to leave mine for pure white, which is 111. Actually, yeah, yeah. And we're going to go to the material again, and we're going to kind of make of our honey. But the first thing we need to do is we need to set our ORI, which is the index of refraction. And I'm going to go ahead and bring that up here. 
this website right here, and I'll leave a link for it, has wonderful setup for what you need to do. So we're going to go ahead and cut, copy this right here, 1.494, and we're going to paste that in there. And that's going to make the way the light refracts off of it look a little bit more realistic. Okay, so let's go ahead and click our color here and kind of give it a little bit of a honey color. Something that looks good. Oops, let's see. Maybe lighten it up a little bit. Yeah, that's not too bad. And then we're going to click our mixer here. And we're going to add new. And then let's see, what did I do? I'm going to do glossy. I'm going to do about 0.5 on the roughness to give a little bit more, a little less shine. And like I say, everybody should really kind of do what you want. Don't do it just like mine. Make it different. Try experimenting. It's the only way you're really, really going to learn. If you don't do it, if you don't try, you're not going to ever learn. Just don't copy and paste me. Change it up a little bit. Be a little bit different. And also, if you post the link or have questions, you know, please ask. I'm, I'm more than willing to help out any way I can. Uh, I'm kind of looking forward to it. So from there on, okay, and that actually looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and go to the render settings. So if you have a discrete, G, uh, discrete GPU, go ahead and click that there. If you have a nice GPU that's something pretty relevant, fairly current, you'll get a lot better performance by using that. And then you're going to crank your resolution to 100% so you don't cut half frames. And if you're running on a slower computer, you can click border and crop, and what that does is that will only, uh, I should have said that earlier, but that will only show what's in the frame for the camera. And we're going to show that right now by hitting zero on your numpad. This is the camera view here, so it's only going to render what the camera sees, nothing on the outside. If you hit shift F, you can kind of freely move the, the camera around by using your A, W, S, and D keys, as well as Q for down and E for up. And shift will kind of sprint. Think of it as like a first-person shooter. So we're going to kind of set our frame here. And then just left-click with your mouse to set that. All right, not too bad. Okay, so the next setting is going to be... Let's do sampling. Now, with sampling... The higher the samples, the more crisp it's going to look. And I always kind of do something, and I'll show you here. I pick a frame, and I click Render, and I see how long it takes to render that frame at that samples to see if it's kind of pointless. Actually, you know, let's do one more thing to this water here. Let's go back to 3D View, and we're going to click on our water or our domain. We're going to actually add a subdivision surface modifier on it. And that's going to give it a little bit more uh, more vertices. It's going to cut up the material a little bit more to make it look a little bit more smoother. Yeah, that'll look a lot better. So let's go ahead and render that out. And this is going to be at 128 samples. If you spend a lot of time in fluid simulation, you will learn that your rendering can take a long, long time. So I always play with my samples to see what gives the best look. And I actually hit animation on that. See? Doing this live. Making mistakes like crazy. So once you render out one frame, you can click this right here that says slot and change to a different slot. And you can bounce back and forth and see kind of what it's going to look like with different samples so you can compare the two so we're going to go ahead and crank the samples down let's try 80 i'm going to click slot 2 i'm going to render another fr the frame again to see if we can tell a difference now how to go between the slots is you just press j on the keypad i'm sorry on your keyboard and it will uh, bounce back and forth between all of the slots that you've used so it's a great way to really compare and, and it doesn't seem like much but you notice how it took five seconds off, and you can see it bouncing back and forth. That's a lot. I mean, for one image, it's not a big deal, but when you're doing 125 seconds, it really adds up. That's about six minutes. And I can not even tell a difference between the two images. So we're going to keep it at about 80, 80 uh, samples. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the clamp indirect to get rid of these little white fireflies here. We're going to set it for about one, and it's, they're still there. So we're going to hit 
clamp indirect to one, and they're still here because that is not fireflies. That is our lamp. So we're actually going to go ahead and delete the lamp because I don't need it. And they're still there. See? Doing this live. Oh, that's because... <laughs> that would be because this is actually the rendered image. Not... It's not the lamp at all. See? See what happens when you don't write a script? Okay. So yeah, that did... Clamp indirect did work. Because if we get rid of it, it's back. So sometimes you have to do clamp direct or indirect. Uh, usually try with clamp and direct first. That will usually get rid of them. I usually set these values to the same because if you don't, it kind of affects the way the lighting of the scene is. So with that done, the next thing to do is actually how you're going to render it. So you're going to pick where you want to save it. And anywhere is fine. I'm just going to go ahead and save it on my desktop for right now. Except this is actually where you would name it as well. So I forgot to do that. So we'll just do uh, the date for today, which is 3... 719. I'm going to hit accept and then we're going to change how you want to render it. Now how you want to render it is up to you. You can do any one of these formats there. It's quite fine. Traditionally speaking, depending on the size of the render, I will save it either as a JPEG, which if you click JPEG, it's going to enter it's going to render each frame. So you're going to have 120 pictures. So if you have the ability, a program like Premiere or whatnot, where you can just shove all the pictures in there and it turns into a movie, then that's perfect. The benefits to that are that if for some reason Blender crashes at, say, frame 70, you don't have to start the render from the beginning. You can just render from 70 all the way to the end. The downside is it's a lot of files, and sometimes people don't have the ability to put pictures into a movie format, which you could actually do with Blender. Uh, I've never done it, though. The other option that I use besides JPEG is FFMPEG. And when you do that, that's going to encode it in a, in a video format. And then you click here as the container, which is, I believe that's what it says. Yeah, container. And click MP4. You can leave it at its normal settings, but you have to have the codex to play that video. Now, for output quality, I traditionally set it for high. Anything higher than that, I mean, there is a difference, but it's not really noticeable. And then for encoding speed, that depends on how much space you have on your computer. I always do the biggest because I'm not super worried about it. I have quite a few terabytes available. Other than that, that's really about it. If you're super constrained for your space on your hard drive, then do very slow and it will just compress it, but compression takes a while. So I'm always in a hurry. Other than that, that's really about it. Go ahead and hit animation and render it out. And like I say, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below, and I will be more than willing to help at any chance that I have available. Also, I'd love to see your guys' renders out there. I'm going to post a link to uh, the ORI website and also a Blender documentation page about the viscosity, as well as I'm going to link in the video another video that shows resolution comparisons uh, for the domain where I talked a little bit about but I didn't go into super crazy detail about but that way this this final resolution so you can see the difference between 100, 200, 300, and 400 traditionally if you want really good looking water that's realistic or fluid you'll want to set it for about 300 on that I hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to like and subscribe Thanks.